Hey everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I started this channel mainly as a way for me to learn more about implementing large language models and figure out how we can use them to solve real world problems. I want to keep things practical and hopefully help both you and myself make good pro progress on this learning journey. Today's topic is something I'm really excited about how to find tune Google's Gemini models. Specifically, we'll look at supervised fine tuning. Now, I'll assume you have a basic understanding of what supervised fine tuning is essentially using a labeled data set to adapt a pre trained model for a specific task. So, we'll skip the deep conceptual dive and focus on the how to with Gemini. All right, let's start by looking at the official Google Cloud documentation. As the docs explain, supervised fine tuning is great when you have a specific task and labeled data. Think things like classification, summarization, extractive question answering, and chat. It's particularly useful when you need the model to learn a specific structure or format for its output or handle niche tasks that deviate from its general training. The docs also list the Gemini models that currently support supervised fine tuning Gemini 1.5 Pro, Gemini 1.5 Flash, and the one we we'll use today, Gemini 2.0 Flash. There are also limitations listed for each model. For Gemini Flash, pay attention to things like the maximum input output tokens, which is quite large, over 131,000 tokens for training. There are also limits on dataset size and the number of examples. Definitely check these details for the specific model you choose. One known issue mentioned is that tuned models currently can't be deleted from the Vertex AI model registry, but they won't incur costs if they aren't being used for inference. Okay, theory is great, but let's make this practical. For this video, I'm working on a small personal project fine, tuning Gemini to rewrite AI generated prompts to make them sound more natural and human-like. I generated some AI style prompts using Gemini itself. For the human-like target prompts, I grabbed data from the awesome, awesome ChatGPT prompts project. Those prompts often sound very natural. Let's quickly look at the kind of data I have. You can see one column has the AI style prompt and the other has the more human-like version. I filtered it down so I only have about 83 samples for this demo small, but enough to show the process. Now, the most critical part preparing the data. Google Cloud requires fine tuning data for Gemini to be in a specific JSON lines, JSONL format. It's a text file where each line is a complete JSON object representing one training example. You need to upload this file to a Google Cloud storage bucket. Let's look at the structure required for Gemini. Each JSON object per line needs a, an optional system instruction telling the model its task and contents, uh, which is a list containing the conversation turns. Each turn has a role user for input model for desired output and parts containing the text. Here's the Python code I use with pandas to loop through my CSV data and structure it into this JSON format. It defines the system instruction once then creates the user and model parts for each row and writes them as a JSON line. For my project, the system instruction will be something like your task is to rewrite AI generated prompts to make them more human like the contents list will have two items first role user with the AI prompt and second role model with the target human like prompt. And here's what one line in the final training data JSON file looks like. You can see the system instruction and then the user model pair with the corresponding prompts. The documentation also recommends starting with at least 100 examples and stresses that data quality is more important than quantity. It also strongly suggests having a separate validation data set, though I'm skipping that for this simple demo. All right, once you have your training of data, JSON file, you need to upload it to Google Cloud Storage. You'll go to Cloud Storage in your Google Cloud project. If you don't have one, create a, a bucket, give it a unique name, choose settings and create it. Once the bucket exists, navigate inside it and click Upload Files. Select your JSON file and upload it. I've already done this, so here's my training data. JSON file sitting in the GCS bucket. 
With the data in GCS, we can finally set up the fine tuning job in Vertex AI. Go to the Vertex AI section in your console. You'll want to find the Generative AI Studio and then Tune Models. Click on Create Tune Model. Now we configure the job, give your tune model a name, select the base model you want to tune. Point the training data set to your JSONO file in GCS. Optionally add a validation set. The default hyperparameters are often okay for a first run. Once configured, you hit start tuning. This will kick off the tuning process. It can take a while depending on the model and dataset size. You can monitor its progress here. Okay, I'm not going to make you wait for that job to finish. Let me show you a similar job I completed earlier using the same data. Once the job is done, you can click into it to see the results. Under Dataset Info, it confirms the dataset used. You can see I only used 81 examples. Google estimates the cost, which for this small dataset was incredibly low, just a few cents. The Monitoring tab is really interesting. You'll see graphs showing metrics over training. The key one is the loss. Ideally, you want to see the loss decrease significantly, indicating the model is learning. My loss started high and dropped low which looks pretty good. There might also be accuracy metrics where higher is better. You might also get some cool visualizations about your training data like token counts per example. So that's a basic walkthrough of supervised fine tuning for Gemini models using Vertex AI. We covered understanding when to use it, preparing the data in JSON format, uploading to GCS, running the tuning job, and looking at the results. I hope this was helpful and demystified the process a bit. I'm still learning a lot myself. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. And if you're also on a journey learning about LIMMs, consider subscribing so we can learn together. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.